Hi, Floss Tube. It's Jerry Caudill, the Yankee Creek Stitcher. I am back for Floss Tube, lucky number 21. It is Thursday, March 28th of 2019. Can you believe it? April will be here in just a few days. <laughs> it's crazy. This year has flown by. It's been a couple of weeks since I last uh, chatted with you. Um, and I think going forward, at least through the summertime, spring and summer, um, I'm going to be doing bi-weekly. So just every other week, um, at least through spring and summer, as it is getting nicer outside, we will be going outside and doing some our projects that needs to be done, uh, cleaning up all around the trees and the shrubs and the pool and just, oh, it's spring cleaning and I'm super excited. So I'm ready to get outside. I love to hibernate, but as the sun has been finally coming through and giving us some beautiful days, definitely have spring fever. Today is a beautiful 74 degrees. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to get this recorded and get outside to start, you know, making my list, my to-do list. This is like probably the second or third pretty nice, at least decently nice day. Um, I like it to be at least above 60 before I get outside to do anything. So spring fever has hit us. Okay, so what I have been up to, I haven't done a lot of stitching. Um, I was going to do a floss tube last week, and from my previous floss tube to the next time that I would have recorded, I did not stitch at all, nothing. I worked on some stitching related items. I have all of my mania charts picked out and kitted up with the fabric. Luckily, I did have enough fabric for all 31 charts that I have picked out to start in May. I'm not going to kit up the floss. Um, I'm just going to, I'll grab um, a color or two of whatever I'm going to stitch on in that particular area on that chart for that day. There's no need to go through and pull all that floss out. I'm stitching on it for one day. So I know I won't need all the floss um, at that particular time. So I'm just, I've got all the fabric, which is the biggest, the biggest thing to take care of. And so I have all of that done and I will be sharing my mania plans with you. Um, in a few weeks, it'll be a separate video. And I did finish all of my spring decorating in my home to go from pretty much no spring decor to what I have now. I'm super thrilled with. Um, I love walking into my home and seeing all the beautiful spring bright colors. So I'm loving it. I'm glad I finally embraced it. <laughs> and I will have a video, a short video of my spring home day to spring home tour at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Okay. And I think uh, I had mentioned in my last floss tube, Jen Lee with quirks and stitches go follow her on floss tube. She has tons of awesome projects going on. She has a wall of whips you'll see in her floss tube. I know her last one, she has three, um, strands. I, I think it's maybe twine. She has them on and cards for each whip. She has them color coded by the size of her charts. But wow, she has a ton of whips already going on. She is too busy in May to do Mania. So she has been doing March Madness, which I think is an awesome idea. Because I think in May, I'm going to be like really busy. So I'm not going to have a lot of time to stitch on each start that I have in May. So after watching her, I'm like, man, March Madness would have been awesome. Because, you know, it's transition weather-wise. Um, it would have really been a great month for me to do a month of starts rather than May. So next year, I will probably do in March Madness instead of Mania. Okay, so she uh, she is doing the 24-hour stitch-thon with her mom. It's next weekend, April 5th, April 5th and 6th. 4 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's Friday to Saturday, 4 p.m. to 4 p.m. So, of course, since I'm doing all my new starts in May, I am going to be working on my whips. I had, I don't know, 18 or 19 whips um, to start the year. And 
the past couple of weeks, um, or actually just the past few days, I've only been stitching on my uh, chalk, seasons of chalk art spring. That's the only thing I've stitched on. So I've not worked on any of my whips recently, older whips anyway. So I think that's what I'm going to work on. Um, I'm not going to be able to stitch the 24 hours, but I'm going to stitch as long as I can. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun just to join in and see, um, you know, what everyone else is working on. So I'm going to give it a go. I'll let you know. Um, I'll probably, you know, video here and there, just, you know, my progress. So that's my plan. It may be every couple of hours to switch my whips. I do have the Tiny Decisions app, so I might just spin it every, you know, couple of hours just to, you know, keep your interest. Okay. So if you're interested in joining that, Jen Lee Quirks and Stitches, she'll have all the details and you can enter. I'm not going to officially enter, um, but you can officially join in, have a chance for a $24 gift card to 123 Stitch. Okay, so I've had several people ask and was curious about the little item that's usually right here on my wall. So I thought I would share that with you all today. And I've had this, oh my gosh, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. And I think I got it off of eBay. It was eBay or Etsy because I love butterflies. I'm thinking it was probably Etsy, but it is, it's a mirror and you'll see all my recording equipment, but it's all butterflies, all those little glass and there's actually a metal charm, but it's all butterflies and with just a little mirror here in the center. And I don't, uh, there's black. I'm honestly not sure what that is holding all the tiles in there, but that's what that is. It's just a mirror with beautiful butterfly tiles all around it. So that's what's hanging up there. <laughs> okay. I did have a few more stash enhancements. I had been watching this item on eBay and it was a great deal. It was the chart with the floss and the call for linen. It's Bent Creek's Trick or Treat Row. I am so excited to get this going and I have a lot of fall themed Halloween autumn charts that I'll be doing in Mania. So super excited about getting this. It came, like I said, with the week style works, all the call for floss and the 32 count summer khaki. It came with that as well. So it was all kitted up, ready to go. No brainer. That's going straight into Mania. <laughs> and from Stitch and Frog, I did a pre-order for market with Stitch and Frog. Um, they had a sale price already on them, so I went ahead and I got Plum Street Samplers, Fox View. Super, super cute. Love that. Love those colors. I got Teresa Kogut's. Um, Happy Scarecrow. Love that. I also got Teresa Kogut's Bloomin' Hens. Oh, I cannot wait to get that stitched and up in my hutch. Because it will be perfect in my hutch. I also got Kathy Barrick's HL's Moth. Which I thought was just beautiful. Love the colors. Just gorgeous. These other two charts were not from market, but I've been I am eyeing them. They were on sale. So they jumped in my cart. <laughs> the Cricut Collection. Um, it is called A Walk in the Woods. Beautiful beautiful colors. 
I've seen um, Amy Loves Toad. She stitched, she stitched um, part of it and then cut it apart because she wasn't crazy about it. So she cut it apart and it, she made it beautiful. Um, but I, I love it as it is. Anxious to get that and it's in my mini planes as well. And I have loved this chart. It's been, um, I've been watching it on eBay. Um, I watched for it to go on sale in any other places. And I went ahead and pulled the trigger on it. It's Blackbird Designs Feliz Navidad. I love it. Love it. Love it. Just all the little motifs, the colors. Gorgeous. Just, I couldn't resist anymore. I just went ahead and snagged it. So that was all in my haul. That wasn't too bad, right? <laughs> Been pretty good. Okay. Um, I don't have finishes. I do have two FFOs to share with you. The first one is my Snowflower Diaries little bunny. This is just on um, foam uh, sticky board. I do have the. Uh, quilt batting underneath the stitching. I made my ruffle. It's, I went ahead and glued the magnet on here. This is a longer burger basket. It's actually like a little serving platter. Um, I think they actually do have a pottery piece that fits in there, but I thought this was the perfect shape to hold cross stitch pieces. So I, I did go ahead and glue the magnet in there. I got my washer on the back here. So I can change this out if I have another piece that I want to stick in at another time. And the little flower and bow eggs up here, they are all just attached together and then simply wired onto this. So I can easily take it off as well. So I was super happy with that. And you'll see in my home tour where I have put that in my dining room. And my other fully finished item, I've watched several people do, do this project. It's diamond painting. And I thought, no, there's no way I'll ever do that. I have enough going on as it is. And a lot of the designs, they're just not they're not part of what I would put out in my home, but my studio, I do love bright mix and match stuff in my studio. So Danielle Stitcherista, she early, early on when she started diamond painting, she had gotten this and it's um, warped sunflower. It's on a smaller scale of what she did. Hers was pretty large of um, what she initially done. It's on a smaller scale. I got one. And what prompted me to get this and, and try it out, because it's so addicting, it's so addicting, it's so much fun. Um, Donna, stitching and doodah, she showed her cow that she had diamond paid in. And Shauna was, has, every time she, Donna would bring it up, talk about it, want nothing to do with it, want nothing to do with it. It even convinced her to like, okay, she got her own. So I had showed it the cow print to my daughter. I loved the cow print. I was going to get it myself and to do it and put it in my studio to try out diamond painting, to see what it was all about and put it in my studio. I loved it. Loved the colors. Um, so I showed it to my youngest daughter. She's like, oh my gosh, I want to do it. I want to do it. And she's crafty like me and loves doing puzzles, loves being organized and doing that type of thing. So I figured she would love it. And she does. She has not finished hers. We got them a couple of weeks ago. It was after my last floss tube. So I was, I did mine and finished mine. I mean, if I had just sat down and concentrated on it, I might've been able to do it in a day maybe two days, but I worked on it here and there. And what, that's what I love about the diamond painting is, you know, the cross stitch, you got to get your chart out, get your fabric out, figure out where you were on the chart, what floss you're going to, you know, be using next, blah, blah, blah. With diamond painting, I kept the color out that I was working on and 
I was helping my husband. I got new lighting in my studio. I can't tell. I don't know if you can tell if it's brighter in here, but I absolutely love it. It is great to work with. Um, it makes it much easier for me to see things in here. Thanks, honey. I know he will, he'll be watching this later. But I was helping him install the lights in here. So it, every now and then, hey, I need you to help me do this. So I, you know, set my pen down, came in here, helped him, went right back out to the table, knew picked up right where I left off. There was no, okay, where was I? Let me just see what I was doing, where I was on my chart. That's what I loved about it. So at busy times when I've only got like 10, 15 minutes to spare that I'm, you know, got just a few minutes to fill, I can sit down. I have it on my dining table. So sat down, started diamond painting away. And before I knew it, it was time to go. <laughs> so I really did enjoy it just for the ease of I don't like to sit idle. If I'm sitting still, I have to read the news or I, I you know, I want to cross stitch. I want to do something. So it was really great for a busy, busy day that I could just sit down and go right back into what I was doing. So I did, it was off Amazon. We got both of them off Amazon. Great prices. Uh, so this is Warp Sunflower all finished. It is an eight by 10 finished. And it, I mean, it fit in, the, I had an extra frame. So I was, you know, cut off the edges of the fabric and of the canvas, stuck it in there. It's gorgeous. I absolutely love these colors. But like I said, most of the designs, you know, I like primitive. Um, and that's not what a lot of the diamond painting is, so this really suited me and like i said this will go right here in my studio i absolutely love it i think it's gorgeous and my daughter she wanted to do the cow and that's not you know that doesn't fit her bedroom so once she's done with it she said i can put it in my studio as well yay i would like to get another one just to have you know as i have a few minutes to work on it here or there um but I haven't seen any more that really have really caught my eye. So when I do, I'll get another one. But it's not something that I am going to go all out and start as another pro as another hobby. But I enjoyed it for what it is. Very simple to do. So if you have little kids, something simple they can do. Okay. So... I, like I said, I do have one whip that I have worked on. I've probably stitched on it maybe six hours or so the past couple of weeks. And that's primarily been the last few days. So, this is Seasons in Chalk by Hands on Design Spring in collaboration with Priscilla Blaine. It is coming right along. I love how I've been in the mood just to be a monogamous, monogamous stitcher. And this is all, this is all I've stitched on for probably the past month. This is the only thing I've stitched on. So I'm very pleased with the progress, very pleased with how all the colors have come together. Uh, I keep telling myself I still got time to finish it for spring. It's about what? three and a half, four weeks away. So maybe, maybe I'll get it done. But I don't know with the warmer weather headed our way. Uh, we're anxious to get outside and get going. So that is all I have to, st to share with you stitching wise this week. Um, and like I said, I will be doing bi-weekly videos um, for the next few months. So I hope everyone is going to be getting spring weather soon and we can get out and start enjoying it. Um, and stay tuned at the end of this and you can see my spring home day. Uh, <laughs> I keep wanting to see, say decor, my spring home tour. So until next time, enjoy and happy spring and happy stitching. It is finally a beautiful spring day in our neck of the woods. So it has put me in the spirit. I have finished my spring decor and I'm going to share it all with you. The 
flower arrangement on my dining room table. That, that is a Pyrex bowl. Um, pretty old. It was my mom's. Came across a bunch of old stuff recently from her. And it's a little bit bolder yellow than it's coming through right now. But a lot of these flowers um, came from my daughter's wedding from last year. And some of the tulip ones are from Michael's from this year. But as we make our way around, this is my little spring display in my dining room. The little red truck is loading up some daisies. And then of course we just have some tulips and some daisies down here on the bottom in the Wonka Burger baskets. And here is my fully finished Snowflower Diaries bunny in the Wonka Burger basket. When I downsized my tulip wreath, I had all of these tulips left over. They're still just in their bunches and I simply just laid it in the basket and filled it in with some cotton and other little goodies. My tiered tray. No stitching in it yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> Happy with the way it turned out. To start with, pretty much no spring decor. I came across some good bargains between Walmart and Hobby Lobby, Kroger. That was a Hobby Lobby find, the big B metal, metal art there. This little cart with the metal flowers and greenery, I actually got that at Goodwill a few weeks ago for $1.99. That was so cute. It's a little dusty and a little too tedious to clean all the dust off of it, but I thought it was adorable for $1.99. So this is my dining room for the spring. Okay, from the dining room, this is into my kitchen and the little buffet I have in there. I purchased the wreath. I uh, got that at Hobby Lobby and it came with the white on there. I just filled it in with some flowers and greenery. I think I, I either got those at Hobby Lobby or Michael's this year. And this was a little rabbit. I, another thing we had found going through old family stuff. The glassware I got there as well. Um, the flowers in these two canisters, in uh, the canister and bowl, is just the fallout from when I made the tulip wreaths. So I just piled them in, piled them in the jar in the bowl. I think it looks great. The Hello Spring sign, I got, actually got that at Walmart. The basket itself is from Hobby Lobby and the flowers, some were from my daughter's wedding. And of course the tulips are from this year. The little sunflower and chickadee over here that actually came from Derby Dinner Playhouse that I got a couple weeks ago. And that will take us on to my hutch. It is coming along great, I think. That's where I ended up with my tulip wreath after I downsized it. I think it turned out great. Love, love, love my hutch. The sign on the top actually came from Lowe's. It was on a clearance in their little clearance section. So I snatched that up. I thought it would make it into a finish for the longer cross stitches that I, that I have that I'll be finishing. Um, but right now it looks great right there on top of my hutch. So, and there's my rag garland and some cherry blossoms poking out on either side of it. We'll go into a close up. And this is a culmination from Goodwill, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, um, Kroger, <laughs> stuff I've already had previously. I did want to point out the stack of books here. Those were some books that, that my daughter was going to throw out. 
and I thought, you know what, that would make great just little stacker stuff to give other things height when I display them. And I, so I took some scrapbook paper and simply wrapped it around the book and stuck it there. You'll never, you'd never know. So this is the first level. And a lot of these flowers were from my daughter's wedding. So I loved the colors. I told her, I said, I will find a use for these. That's my, <laughs> that's my chicken, but it doesn't have a beak. <laughs> I got that on clearance. I don't remember where it was, but I thought, oh, I'll stick something on there to give it a beak one day. And I just never have. <laughs> and there's my little sheep with a bunny. The hippity hop, I believe I found that at Walmart. All of these flowers with the little bird is uh, pretty much from my daughter's wedding. The tulips, of course, is from Michael's. And I just stuffed some things in there and I think it, it turned out great. This is my favorite shelf, the third row here. I just love the colors of this the black chicken and then oh I just love oranges and this sign I believe I got this from Walmart as well and the flowers are from my daughter's wedding and the egg plate in the back was an egg plate my mom used to use for deviled eggs she still makes deviled eggs but for some reason she stopped using that and we came across it recently and I thought that would be perfect back there and on to the beehives matter. I thought that it just came together so well. Each each row is its own little its own little kind of theme, but in the top shelf it doesn't have a lot of springy things in there, but you know, it works it all works together. So I was really happy with it. I think it looks awesome and I'm so so thrilled with decorating for spring now <laughs> it will definitely help encourage me to take my Christmas down usually I wouldn't be taking my Christmas down until around this time of the year but we've got spring out and I love it it is a beautiful 73 degree day today and so spring fever has set in so I'm thrilled with this and now everything has come together. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.